Hey guys, just wanted to shoot this real quick video about a tool that I use on my computer that really helps me get some scouting done in short order. I think a lot of you guys already have it on your computer. You've probably even used it before. But it seems there's a lot of people that don't know there's a little feature on here that'll really help them fast forward uh, their scouting. So, you know, whether you've just bought a piece of property or maybe you've got permission to hunt a different piece of property so that, you know, you can keep the hunting pressure off your own. Or even if you're scouting state land, you know, if you're going out of state somewhere, uh, this tool here really is invaluable and it really helps me to figure out what deer are doing even before I get to the property. So I uh, just want to run through that tool with you here real quick. So one of the tools I like to use is Google Earth and a lot of you guys probably already have it on your computer, but it is a free download. Uh, it used to be 300 bucks to get it on your computer, but uh, if that's what you're still thinking, uh, try again because you'll get it for free. And um, I like to use this before I show up to a client property to either create a habitat plan or a hunting strategy. So what I'll do is I'll go to the property on Google Earth, I'll uh, zoom it in, and then I'll come up here to this little clock icon, and I call this a historical tab. Uh, just click on this right here, and then what it'll do is you'll see this uh, little time scroll bar pop up here on the top left, and this will allow you to go back in time. Now, the reason that, that is important is because I want to see an aerial photo of this property without any leaf cover. Because if you have the right kind of vegetation, the right kind of conditions on this property, you can actually see the deer trails and, and sometimes even some of the beds if it's got some tall grass. So right here you can see uh, this last picture uh, was taken in September of 2018. So that is kind of nice to know when the last picture was taken. Now you can see here, you know, just from this picture, even with leaf cover, we've got a little bit of a swamp down here with a crick going through it. Crick kind of goes through this way. It looks like we got some cattails here. Uh, we got some cattails here with a crick going through the power lines. Uh, looks like this might be some sort of an ag field. But this aerial here really doesn't do us any good because we can't really see any other deer activity. So let's see if we can find an image that doesn't have any leaf cover. So what you would do is you'd come over here to the scroll bar and now you can either move this over with your mouse but sometimes it gets a little clunky and you know you skip over some of the dates. So I want to go one at a time. So the next recent picture after or before September 2018 is um, 2017. So this would be September 2017. Still got a lot of leaf cover. Doesn't do us any good. Hit it one more time. And this is kind of, they must have the date on the other one wrong because this one is September 2017. It's only a day different than the other one. Still not good enough. Let's hit it again. And this takes us to 2016, and this is in mid-April. So this is exactly what I'm looking for. And it uh, really shows the different types of trees. It pops up some of these little water holes that, you know, we didn't even notice on the other picture. So really, really valuable information if I'm going to come in here and uh, hunt this area. So just for grins, we'll go back uh, even more. We'll come back to this, but if we go back even more just to show you how this works... Right now we're on 2016, we hit it again, it takes us back three more years to 2013. Now we're at 2011 and you know, the resolution isn't as good anymore back then. Hit it again and the same picture that we looked at earlier about well, the same time frame because this is April, but it's 2011 and the water tower is not there. And if we keep hitting it, it takes us to 2009. That's not bad, but uh, a lot of things have changed since then. This is 2006. 2005 this is again 2005 2003 and 1999 so uh, pretty low resolution right there so anyway that gives you an idea of how this works so I'm going to just take the uh, scroll bar and I'm just going to move it over to uh, 2016 so this is the most recent aerial photo they have without any leaf cover Anyway, um, what I want to do is show you what I'm looking for when I finally find an image like this. And I'm going to just zoom in here. So once we zoom in, the uh, image kind of tilts a little bit, right? You can see some of these deer trails that cross the power lines. And this is really uh, valuable information. So, you know, you can see some sort of a two track that the power company uses. But uh, you can see the little deer trails that go through the trees, come out into the power lines, across this power line, and they're heading down here 
to this area, which doesn't seem to have a lot of big trees. So it's telling me that this is uh, a lot of scrub brush, something that was probably logged off. It's got a lot of bedding opportunities in here. So the other thing I'm thinking too is, you know, if we um, zoom out a little bit more, we can see that up here, we've got soybeans to the north. We've got scrub brush. We got some trees, power lines, and then it gets into some more scrub brush. We got this crick system running through here. So what I'm thinking here, ju just without even stepping foot on this property, I'm going to assume that the deer are in this field in the evening feeding, and then in the morning, they're going to start heading south into their bedding area, which is over in here. And I wouldn't be surprised. We got some uh, mature bucks that are bedded, you know, around this swamp right here, right on the edge of the cattails. It's almost as predictable as sunrise that that's probably what's going on. And then you've got uh, some of the does and younger deer that are probably bedded up a little bit closer to the power lines, a little bit closer to the food. And, you know, they could be bedded around some of these swamps and some of this tall grass and, and sh scrub brush. So that pretty much tells me I know which way the deer are coming from in the evening and I know which way the deer are going in the morning. I'm going to be coming in from the, uh, from the east side here on the right and I'm going to be coming in right down through here. And the last conifer tree that is closest to this deer trail crossing right here is this uh, conifer tree right here. So I have an opportunity maybe to climb into this one, this one, this one, and uh, just get about, uh, you know, 20, 30 yards off this deer trail. So, and you can see here, you know, we've got this fence that goes all the way around this water tower. It's pretty high. It's got a barbed wire on top as well. And so when these deer come out of these uh, soybeans, you know, they're either coming into the corner of the field, which is what they like to do. They work their way down through this uh, woodlot and then they cross and you can see they're coming right underneath this conifer and they're walking right down through here, walking across this power line and then going into the bedding area. It looks like it kind of winds, wise off right here, wise off right there. Here's another pretty good trail that walks right through here. This is, looks like it's got some cattails in it. You know, we've got another trail that runs right along the fence here. So if they're coming out of this field, they're walking right along this fence, easy to see. They're crossing this mowed path right there. They come down through here and then they, uh, you know, go back into the bedding area. So one other thing that you can use to say, okay, how far is this conifer or this conifer from this trail going north and south? So all you need to do is come up here to this little symbol here and you can take a measurement. So what you can do is uh, after that pops up, you want to measure this thing in yards. So with that, I'm going to put a, I'm going to just click right here on this tree. And then I'm going to click about, about right here where they're crossing on that trail. And it'll show you it's 16.8 yards. So, I mean, that's just a little chip shot, which tells me, hey, maybe I can, maybe I can sit in this tree instead. So if I move it back to there, now that's 30 yards. That's still very doable. So I know that I have a few trees that I can choose um, and, and set up in knowing that uh, this main trail coming south and going north is going to be within bow range. So one other thing I wanted to uh, just bring to your attention from a strategic standpoint, you know, this would definitely be a, a no brainer to hunt this with a southwest, west or northwest. And the reason why is because when these deer are out into this um, soybean field, as it gets toward morning, they're going to start heading south back to the bedding area. And so with a westerly wind, they're going to hug this uh, fence right here because they can scent check this whole woodlot as they head back south toward the bedding area. Now, they don't have to worry about anything over here inside the fence because this fence acts like a barrier. And so, you know, there's no coyotes or predators that's going to, you know, be able to jump through the fence and get at them. So all they have to do is worry about anything that's off to the west side here. And with a westerly wind, you know, they can they can do that and just scent check as they go with their nose. So they're cross-winding right here, right? And so at the same time, that westerly wind allows me to come in from the east, climb into one of these trees, and I'm completely downwind of that deer as he passes right in front of me. And, you know, that's just a little chip shot. So, you know, this is just a great opportunity for, you know, let's say I just wanted to take a doe, right? I mean, I haven't scouted this area yet. I don't have any trail cam pictures out, never set foot here before. 
But, uh, you know, it's either, let's say it's state land or it's a piece of property that I have permission to hunt. I can pretty much be assured that even if I wanted to just shoot a doe, I could probably make it happen just by sitting in one of these trees with the westerly wind. Here's another area in southwest Michigan. This happens to be public land, a pretty big section of public land. Uh, you can see we've got a little island of a uh, cover. I mean, can you imagine what the hunting is like on this thing right here? The all public land. Uh, probably not too accessible by other people. You really can't get to it with a boat because of all the cattails and swamp grass. Now, how many guys are actually going to, you know, cross this water right here? So, you know, we got an island right here where we probably got some pretty big bucks bedded. And look at the highways coming off and on this island here, huh? I mean, if you knew this existed because of this aerial photo, I mean, you've got uh, a point here, a point here, and a point here that you could really focus on. So, I mean, how far is it from this trail to this trail? Well, let's uh, figure it out. We'll go here to the measurements. And from this spot here to this spot here is about uh, 65 yards. So if you had some sort of an easterly wind, like a northeast, you know, blowing this way, you know, these deer then at the end of the day, they come right off of that island and they would head right out into the wind heading for these oaks over here. So if this is 65 yards from here to here, you could sit right in the middle and be 30 yards from either one with your scent blowing right over top of the swamp grass. And if you're pretty scent free, you can get away with it. And these deer will parallel your scent. You know, one trail going to the north of your scent trail, another one going to the south of your scent trail. And you're splitting the difference and you can shoot to either one. So, you know... You would never be able to learn this with Onyx Maps, right? Because uh, everything on Onyx Maps has got leaf cover. So anyway, guys, I hope this has been helpful to you, and we will see you on the next video.